photographers and always being around cameras, we actually don't have many pictures of us, so a little background on Eddie. Eddie was born in Havana, Cuba, December 25th, 1942. And uh, he lived with his parents in a small apartment. His dad used to work for the national airline, Cubana, until 1960, when the new government took over and they had to flee the country. We all know how that went. Uh, when they got here, uh, the economical issues here in Miami were not very great. So if I remember correctly, Eddie had to, and his family, they had to move to New Jersey. And that didn't go well either. So they, had, they ended up down in Puerto Rico. And they were there for about six months until they were able to come back to Miami. And they settled here. Uh, he always told me stories when he lived in Cuba about reading magazines about airplanes. So his passion for aviation started very young. He remembered telling me that reading about the Boeing 707, which was the latest and greatest at the time. And he thought he would never see one in person. And uh, he said the first thing he saw as soon as he got off the plane here in Miami was the Pan Am 707s lined up. And for him, that was, that was love at first sight right there. Um, he, when, when the family got here and the, the economical issues, uh, he couldn't go to school. So, but still, he managed to learn English. And his love wasn't only for aviation, he loved music as well. So he joined a band here in Miami, a salsa band called uh, Conjunto Universal. And they became pretty well known. They got to travel to a couple states. And uh, still to this day, it's the oldest um, I still playing band here in Miami. So. So if you asked to find a picture to describe Eddie, that's the picture right there. Eddie had a free spirit, was always laughing, ready with a smile. Daniel actually took this photo. He was, he never, he never had a bad day in his life. So go ahead. A couple years later, he started uh, videotaping airplanes. He bought himself a used camera and started recording videos, but he said that wasn't for him. So. That's when he found out about slides, and he started uh, taking slides and collecting them as well. And uh, trust me, he has a huge collection, or he had a huge collection. Uh, I think it's over a million slides, if I, I don't want to exaggerate, but it's up there. Uh, go ahead. Uh, of course, he met friends everywhere he goes. He went, they had, he had a gathering all around him. Uh, hundreds of people from all over the world, a gentleman outside, he's, he, uh, he was just asking me if uh, this was Eddie's convention, and uh, obviously it is. He, he got it started, uh, as we used to call it, uh, the slide orgy. Uh, <laughs> that was his thing, he, slides for him. Go ahead. So, funny thing, Eddie was a heavy sleeper. Uh, by the time I met him, I didn't have my driver's license. I was in my early teens. I uh, met him back in 2010, I think. Um, I don't know how it came to be, but he would pick me up every Saturday and Sunday, rain or shine. The only exception was when he had a family event, like a birthday or a party. Um, he would call me at 8 o'clock in the morning, and this is how the call went to wake me up. I would answer, OK. He would say, OK, and I would say, OK. We would hang up. The next call I got from Eddie was that he was outside my house waiting for me. A couple years went by. We did this for three years straight, nonstop, every Saturday and Sunday, rain or shine. He had an old Astro van that was a clunker, wasn't running on all cylinders, was a gas guzzler, and we would drive to Fort Lauderdale. We would put $15 on the tank. Before we left to Fort Lauderdale, we had to put another $15 to make it back down to Miami. But the van never left us stranded. Uh, good thing because the van, the windows would actually overheat. So when there was rain coming, you had to actually time it and start rolling up the windows about 15, 20 minutes because they would overheat about halfway up. So you had to let the, the, the little motor, I guess, cool down and then roll the, uh, the other way up. And the actual, the van would leak. So I don't know if you were better off standing in the rain than being inside the van. Uh, after I got my driver's license, we started taking a couple trips here in Florida. Um, we, 
uh, if we found out there was an airplane that was a short thing, we, we could take a picture. We would plan it and go, and uh, Steven, Armando, and a couple of the guys, Daniel actually went with us a couple of times, would go. The thing about Eddie is like he always wanted to start the, the trip driving, being the one behind the wheel. But by the time we got to the Fort Lauderdale area, he was already falling asleep. So I would take over for the rest of the trip. Now, I don't know how he did it. Eddie was a heavy sleeper. But as soon as I let my foot off the gas, he was awake. So when he fell asleep, oh, and he also liked to drive slow. So when he fell asleep, it was my time to make some time on the road. But as soon as I left my foot off the gas, he would wake up. And I know he's a heavy sleeper because when he fell asleep, I would drive over the lane dividers, the plastic reflectors, just, just one to see if he was really asleep and judge his reaction. It got to the point where I would go over the rumble strips for a little bit and he wouldn't even notice. But then again, took my foot off the gas, he was awake. Go ahead. In 2015, Eddie had a stroke, but as you can see, he's still smiling. Uh, never let that slow him down. He still kept on going to the airport, selling his slides, and drinking a beer or two on the side. Um, like I said, Eddie was a trooper. He never, he, he was always there with the advice for anybody that wanted it. Go ahead. This is actually a couple of uh, years ago planning the uh, next convention. As you can see, Eddie has a beer in front of him. By the way, if you've never met Eddie, he loved beer. Go ahead. And this is, this is how, I mean, the best memory we can have of Eddie, just being at the airport like he always was, seven days a week, and uh, taking pictures of airplane. That's what he did, collecting, selling slides, taking pictures, collecting memories, I guess. So now I'm going to show a couple of uh, pictures of his collection. I don't know if they're actually his, so if... You know the photographer, all credits stay with the original photographers. These are actual scans from digital, from slides, I mean. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them as best as I, I can. So go ahead. Yeah, that's that's uh, the hijacked Antonov tube that was um, landed here in Miami. By the way, that was Eddie's favorite airplane, the Convair 440, hence the, the logo in the back of the shirt this year. Oh, the Martin 44, my bad.
So, as we all know, Eddie passed away last year. Uh, he was very loved by his family, especially his daughter and everybody who got to know him. Eddie never had much money, but he always said, I live my own life. And uh, that's, that's pretty much, that was Eddie. So may he rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you.